Mike test one good. One, two, one, two, check, check. I'm Shane Bergman. This is Impractical Brokers. I'm Jesse Roddinghouse. This is Impractical Brokers, where we're cutting through the bullshit, breaking down the gatekeeping in real estate and business, and discussing the impractical ways to be successful. Time out. You can cut that. Welcome to Impractical Brokers. Like, I mean, it's the fucking show, and then you can say... <laughs> Welcome back to Impractical Brokers. I'm Shane Bergman, and joined by me is my ever so glamorous and glorious and gorgeous Jesse Roddinghouse. Wow, that was very that was kind. a lot, man. It's probably the nicest thing I've ever said about you. Yes, Just uh, sure. I'm gonna. Can we start that over? No. Um, but today <laughs> we're doing an episode, and we're gonna talk about the idea of the importance of dressing for success. There's lots of talk up, out there um, in the professional world, whether it's real estate or in any sales or whatever it is you do and, and dressing for the job. You can hear people as you know as, as large as Ryan Serhan about the way that he views what you should wear and why you should wear things. So Jesse and I, we're going to kind of give some insights as to what we wear, why we dress the way we do and how it's viewed from our clientele and, yeah, and maybe in the real rest estate. of the world. Yeah, in, in, Specifically in real estate. In real estate. Yeah. So earlier before the show, we were kind of talking about some of the things that you've gone through. Jesse's been doing real estate, closing in on 70 years. <laughs> <laughs> and um, three minutes later, <laughs> used, to wear, <laughs> used to wear a three piece suit um, and a top hat. And then he's, he's transitioned out of that into much more like more modern casual style. But uh, all jokes aside, you did start doing real estate and you were fully suited, correct? Uh, I don't think I could afford a suit when I first started, okay. um, but I was attempting to try And I say that meaning I, I, I attempted to try to, to suit up, uh, as much as possible. Yeah. So you like were talking tie, slacks, yeah. uh, button down and then a tie mm -hmm. kind of, yes. And that was your, your dress code. Yeah. The day to day, sort all of the thing. time showings, listing appointments, mm -hmm. whatever you were doing day to day. And then how long did you wear that? And, and, uh, um, I don't, you know. It's actually, I never thought of it all the way back that far because uh, I did suit up for a while and then I took a break from real estate when the market sort of shifted, you know? Okay. And then when I came back into real estate, it was more investment. So when I was doing investment real estate- Probably way more casual. Oh, right? shorts and Chuck Taylors. Like, Cause you're out in the day, field walking Oh, through, you're yeah. running around, going into houses with no electricity or, you know what I mean? You're yeah. selling to investors. Like they didn't care really what you look like. So it wasn't about dressing in a suit to go to a house that had no electricity, no running water or anything like that. And you're, you know, you're peeking around corners or you're, you know, you kick the door open to make sure that all the cockroaches and spiders down. fall down. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you didn't, you didn't wear a suit to that. So, no, yeah. So when I did get into that and then I trans, once I transitioned back into retail, retail, regular real estate, then I was wearing suits up all the time. Okay. Like tie so jackets, everything. I literally had clients tell me one time, hey, are you melting? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, no, I'm just like, of course, I'm, there's water dripping down my back. So yeah, I, I definitely suited up pretty um, pretty consistently. Yeah. And then when did you transition out of suits the second um, time? I think once I be, uh, you know, once my client base, uh, like once my business wasn't so predicated on new incoming business and there was some a lot of the past and sphere and, and a reciprocal business, you know, that sort of yeah. like, I think that's when I started to become more comfortable with being able to wear, I mean, look, I mean, calling a spade a spade, it was like, oh, wearing designer jeans and a designer shirt or whatever and designer shoes. So it wasn't like you, you know, were dressing down, right. but um, not that that's there anything wrong like, with that. Cause you can wear Levi's 501s and no problem. Yeah. Um, Great but, gene. but, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I, that's when I sort of transitioned out of, of wearing suits regularly. But like day-to-day -day operation in real yeah. estate. So a little bit more casual, a little bit more like cooler, right? Because it's really yeah, it, hot it, in Florida wearing and a humid. Suit, I mean, right now, I mean, geez, it, we're, we're, we're in melting. April and it's you're 94 showing property degrees right now, outside. You're in a it's world brutal. Of pain. And yeah. you're showing property in May, June, July. I mean, you're literally melting. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's horrible. And it just, you have to wear the jacket because your suit is, I mean, it's your shirt, saturated. your shirt is so soaking wet that you just have to cover the water, you know, like yeah. there are the stains. And that was, we were joking before the show too uh, uh, about, Hyper you know, typically I wear <laughs> black shirts yeah. because you can't see the, the, the pit not stains. to be graphic, but the pit stains or sweat stains or whatever. And 
it was also white shirts underneath a suit because you couldn't see the water. Gross. And with black, uh, with black suit shirts, number one, they're boiling hot. Number two, the 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 salt white white ring, yeah, it would ruin. So you wear the white ones (laughs) because if you wear blue. Uh, immediately as soon you, as I turn, yeah, put it on which i always wore like i love like blue can't get it can't wear it's purple just, you just see just these huge sweat sweats you know sweat circles you know it's just funny but yeah so and yeah. we talked about earlier where uh both jesse and i must have the same condition called hyperhidrosis <laughs> which if you are a person that profusely sweats and you're always like, oh, I don't understand. Why well, are there other people out there like me? W- what is this condition? It's called hyperhidrosis, which literally just means like you have a, <laughs> an over amount of sweat. Um, but there are ways to, like people like I've looked into this where um, they will insert Botox into your yes, armpit glands armpits. to, yep. to like prevent well. them from smoking yeah. or from sweating, which is which is crazy because like that sweat still needs somewhere to go. Yeah. So like wh- where is you're gonna be going? sweating? You're sweating, sweating out, out of your ribs? Yeah, like your rib cage. <laughs> yeah. uh, but but graphic enough on the sweating campaign, um, kind of dialing back a little bit. So you're in a much more like leisure, casual wear now. Um, have have you ever experienced any pushback from clients like asking like why are you so street casual? for these appointments um no i don't think that i at least not in front of me i don't think anyone's ever said anything i mean certainly someone could have you know when i've left their house or whatever um i would usually equate something like that to my losses like in other words if i didn't get a listing maybe it could have been the way i was dressed yeah i have no idea i don't lose many listings but (laughs) um but it could have been that but no nobody's really given me any sort of pushback on how i dress in front of my face um there have been times where you know many many times that you've heard this saying before read read the room right so there have been times where i've gotten to let's say an appointment or something and i might say it up front and be like oh hey by the way i'm sorry i'm in jeans i just came from where you know what i mean like that way i crush it beforehand or at least okay at least i threw it on the table and they're usually like oh don't worry don't about worry, it yeah. you know like so you can kind of vibe it a little bit but um you know i i have done that I, you know kind of like put it put it feel put it out there yeah yeah, cause, yeah, hey. yeah i mean look if you throw it out there you st- you can you can gauge pretty quickly if yeah. it, if it's an issue you know, no, usually, it's, but also it squashes it. it. It's like, hey, I brought it up. You know what I mean? As opposed to them bringing it up after I leave, potentially. <laughs> right. The whole idea yeah. of like wearing suits. And I think it's it's probably a regional thing. Like I know uh, Dan O'Neill, for, for example, like yeah. the dude's always suited up. But most of his experience is in New York and the, and the climate there is just far different than it, down in Florida. And it is going to be interesting to see since he's expanding into Florida on the West Coast. Like, is he still going to wear suits all the time? So Dan, I dare him. I dare yeah, him. I dare to. you to wear suits in July. I- Dare you to Dan O'Neill? Yeah, dare double dog dare you, <laughs> yeah. Dan O'Neill, wear a suit in July. <laughs> yeah, and report <laughs> report back. back. Yeah, and he's always wearing a gray suit, yeah. and that's going to be the first thing to expose your yeah. sweaty potential yeah, hyperdrosis body. The, the, uh, the, but um, when I first transitioned out of the military in 2015 and right into real estate, you know, I was so used to wearing a uniform, I needed like that structure of a uh, uniform to wear again. And and I was actually really, really excited about the idea of wearing a suit and a tie like that. I, I was just looking forward to yeah. wearing that day to day. And I lasted about a year wearing like the full ensemble. And then like slowly over time, I started like removing pieces like I was just going to wear slacks and a, and a button down no tie because like to keeping that container on my neck yes. too much. And then it was just like, I want to say year two and a half, I was full blown just wearing jeans. And then uh, I was doing polo shirts for a while, like the 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 golf ones, like the wicking ones, uh, just because of the temperature. And I rocked that gear for probably two to three years. And it wasn't until recently that I've just been like, kind of like nice designer t-shirts. I still, I still wear blue jeans all throughout the year um, and then kind of sneakers to go with it. But I mean, I'm wearing the same ensemble like that you're seeing today, jeans, shirt, and shoes on listing appointments, showing property. Um, if I'm going to a networking event, you know, if, if it's a certain like a cocktail attire or something like, sure, I'll throw on a blazer. Um, we have a gala that we're going to this weekend. Like I'll wear a tuxedo, like not saying I don't can't dress up for the the actual dress code of the theme, but day to day showings in Florida, man, it is really hot. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I've experienced is like, bu- like buyers and sellers don't really care that much about kind of what I'm wearing to the scene. Um, 
And it hasn't really been like that big of an objection for me where it's just, it's interesting because a lot of people would be really surprised to know that like I'm going on these multi-million dollar listing appointments in really jeans, like, and jeans and a t-shirt if yeah. we're going to boil it down to what it is. Um, but it's one of those things I think it's important context to understand. Like a lot of these appointments, you know, we talked about this pre-show where it's like, we're not just going into an appointment and it's in a stranger. Like sometimes it is, but most of the time these people like have viewed us, whether it's on our social accounts, they have maybe received the email correspondence from us. So they may have a picture to match up with it. They've read our reviews or whatever it may be. So they're already going into it knowing like our character. And then when they see the shell of the human in, in person, like just the appearance of them isn't really going to, you know, change their, their thought process on, on who this agent is that they're bringing in as a professional. Yeah. I mean, you think about, um, places like New Smyrna beach or Daytona beach or the beach. I mean, obviously you're out in space coast, sure. so you're around beach and I'm sure, you know, agents that do high level listings in shorts and, and, um, you know, sandals because, which, which and, I would and, never, I would never and Tommy wear, Bahama yeah. shirts yeah. because they've been doing business for, you know, 20, 30 years and they're just well, well known, well connected. And so, you know, but nobody's necessarily looking at them going, you know what, they can't connect and sell my multi-million dollar condo on the ocean. Maybe they can't, they probably can't even better because they, they're so well connected and it has nothing to do with the way they look, you know? Um, it's just unique. Cause I, I, I agree with you as we were talking about where, Nowadays, you know, like if you were getting a, a, a cold lead from a phone call like on Zillow and yeah. let's say 10 years ago, Complete stranger, and, 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 and they're like, OK, we're going to meet at the house. And you're thinking, OK, I got to dress for success. I got to dress for the part. I'm going to dress up and I'm going to show up. And maybe I'm and look, Ryan Serhant, Big yeah. Money Energy, right? The book. He's mm -hmm. talked specifically how on one of his first showings, not one of his first ones, but one of his big ones. He rented a, you know, a, a, or he borrowed a, a, a Land Rover, you know, had a driver and all this stuff and got a suit, sure. maxed his credit card because he wanted to make an impression. And, you know, the guy is so smart and so connected now at this point that he probably, you know, could go sell him in joggers and, 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 and slides. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. really could. But I know that he wouldn't in some cases because he would just suit up because he's comfortable and he he enjoys wearing and those. And that's also, I think, also part of the brand, right? Yeah, so finding like what your... you're wearing, the way you look is identified with your brand. And for me, like I'm drawing the line at, sh at shorts. So I'm a jeans guy as far as that's the most casual that I will get on a showing. I'll never have open-toed shoes. It's always going to be some sort of yeah, clothes, never. sneaker, high top, whatever it may be. And then a nice t-shirt. Like to me, that's like the, the, the basics of what I'll wear. Um, I, I, I just find it almost disrespectful shorts and a, and flip flops to where it's just, it doesn't seem like the level of preparation is there. And, uh, to, to me, it's like, there has to be a level of respect that you're wearing, but I'm also very aware of like the majority of the clientele I'm working with. And the way that like, I've always been trained is when you're out showing property or around these appointments, like you never really want to dress over the the clientele like if you went into an appointment and you're wearing a suit and your clients are in shorts and slippers and a shirt like i think there's a level of like they might look up and appreciate that but they might also feel really uncomfortable like they're underdressed and you would put them in a position of questioning what they wore so yeah. i never want to put my clients in that position so i'm always either trying to match what they're wearing and potentially be one level below maybe one level above it yeah. but never want to like supersede their outfit by wearing a suit and that's always been something on my mind um, Which by you sort of riding in the middle and choosing to wear what you wear, it's pretty safe that you are going to be in the middle because obviously you're not going to see what they're wearing before your appointment. No, it's it's a yeah. safe bet so to always know that yeah. I'm probably not going to be overdressed. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are still clients that I'll show if they're wearing shorts and flip flops like cool, like now I'm I'm still OK yeah. in that tour ter or territory as well. But I do think it's, it's definitely a geographical thing, too. Like in Florida, it's just really hot and we have to wear clothing that is sustainable to wear in the heat because we are out showing property and driving around. And there's a handful of agents in our county that are wearing suits, but it's one of those things like, you know, I don't think that that's a sustainable uh, way to do real estate, especially if you're showing a lot of homes. It's just, it just, I think it ends up looking worse after you have a sweaty, nasty suit after a while, right? You're just like, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure the dry cleaning bill is, is I mean, but there, imagine but... if you're out showing property and you're like, if we're a buyer and we're with a client or with an agent and he's in a suit, but it's all sweated out and he's just like dabbing his head the whole time and super uncomfortable. Like that's really distracting. 
Um, yeah, I think I, on both parts, like that agent would probably feel yeah. really like uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm sure that there are a bulk of agents. <laughs> this is just going to be the sweat episode. <laughs> there, I'm, like. a, I'm sure there are bulk of agents locally and in, in your market too that that suit up and would argue the reason for suiting up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I get that, and that that's obviously not what we're here to do is talk. You know that you shouldn't suit up. No, we're just think... talking about the different components of of dressing up and what does that look like for others? Because I, I agree with you. I mean. If I'm wearing a suit at a showing and and whether it's a $350,000 house or a $900,000 house, I don't think that I am necessarily going to come across to those consumers as more knowledgeable because I'm wearing the suit mm -hmm. versus what I'm wearing, you know, now which is nice jeans and a and a golf tee or whatever, um just because of the dialogue, you know? Yeah. Like my dialogue isn't going to change for, no matter what I'm wearing. Um, but I don't know that it would, I don't know. That's just, that's just the way that I'm, I just don't think, I agree with you. I think that on some level of commonality that the perception of being suited up may have been the thing, right? Because you were like, oh, this is the real estate broker guy. I need to, you know, like he knows and I need to work with him and he wears, yeah, he's the authority. He and wears the authority yeah, thousand dollar yeah. suits or multi thousand dollar suits, whatever versus, Oh, I connect with this guy. Right. As we were talking about beforehand, a lot of times those, those, the connections are happening. Like we, pre, you, you said pre, you, and yeah. I always say this, right. Where it's like the first showing happens online. Yep. Well, the same thing happened. Like the first real estate agent interview is happening online. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the interviews are happening and we don't even know it because people start interviewing their agent because they're they're watching and they're connecting with agents and they're starting to create relationships that we don't even know about with ourselves and with others that we don't even know. Yeah, you know? they're getting this idea of, of who you are, or what you look like. And it all goes back to me. It's like brand, like Ryan Serhant's brand, him in the suit, like big money, like condos, New York City. That's that's a brand that he's established well over time. To and me, very like, well, I'm almost like, the opposite of that to where I kind of like having this more casual look, a little bit more of a, of a rugged appearance, right? Beard, tattoos. It's very apparent. And when people see me in person, if they watch any of my social media videos, like they know I, I use profanity. And to me, it's a it's it's deeply rooted in my character as as far back as and we talked about this before the show, like a early lesson on with my father, where my father was a career salesman. He always wore long sleeve shirts, ties, slacks. And we grew up in, in Arizona. So the summers in Tucson, Arizona, we're talking 120 degrees. And my father would wear the, the, these outfits. And it was one afternoon he came home from work covered in sweat. And my father, like for more context, was fully sleeved out just like I am. And I remember, you know, middle school. For I, those that don't know what sleeved out is tattoos. Tattoo, oh, fully, yeah. fully covered. My yeah. father had like. His was, arms were fully covered. His tattoos. arms were fully covered in tattoos, chest. Like my dad had a lot of tattoos. And uh, I remember asking him when I was in middle school, like, dad, like, I don't get it. Why don't you just wear like a, a short sleeve shirt or something so you can be a little bit cooler? And he straight up told me, he's like, if I wore that, no one would respect me because they'd see my tattoos and they would assume I'm either a drug dealer or I was in prison. Yeah. And that was something that like really stuck with me and resonated. And as I was telling you before we started the show, like as I transitioned from the military into real estate, it was something that I made a commitment to myself to where it was like, I don't ever want to be in a work environment where someone just judges me based on the way I look and they judge everything about the way that I can perform and how smart I am and how knowledgeable. And so I'm very, very proud to show off my tattoos now. Very, very proud to show off my beard and that I swear because it develops so much more of like a of a personality of who you are and like people actually respect that i think more than you trying to fake it you know like you're not this person when you're not doing real estate like you go home and you immediately take off that suit and then you start you know swearing and drinking like i'm the same person when i'm showing property as i am with my friends as i am you know conducting in in life and that to me is like this authentic self like when you see me out showing property or at a listing appointment i'm the same dude across the board and and that has now been established as my brand so when people see me they already know like tattoos this is what to expect with this guy and i'm not going on an appointment to cover that stuff and try to convince people like i'm this other version of myself when i'm in real estate mode you know i want them to respect yeah. everything about yeah it. and it's it's a, it has to do a lot with comfort to your, yeah. your personal comfort and where you're at meaning hey I want your business, I want to earn your business, but I don't need your business sort of idea because at the end of the day, like 
when I when I, when I was first in real estate, there was a guy Brad that I was on his team. Brad, his name is Brad, and and he um he had sleeves, and you know what's funny? I never knew. I never mm-hmm. knew he had sleeves, but he wore a suit every day yep. to to the office. And I worked next to this guy. We you know he trained me some. He went on listing appointments and calls and etc. But one day at, in the office at the end of the day, he rolled up his sleeves, you know, like it was, you know, like just rolled them up here to forearm. And I was like, oh, my God, you have tattoos. And he was like, oh, yeah, shit, I got I got yeah. sleeves. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I was like, that's crazy. I, I didn't even know that he had all these tats and stuff. And I said, well, why do you cover it up? And it, I mean, this was this was well over 20 years ago. Okay. So I just it's interesting that 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 perspective was I, I think it still resonates. It's like a today. generational thing too. I, yeah, I but I, I think it still that. resonates today. I think there are people that still try to, um, you know, I mean, just because you say that the whole idea is that you don't want to be in an industry where it is judgmental, mm-hmm. it's still judgmental. We were talking about that beforehand. It's not that the judgment's gone; it's still judgmental. But you're just you're more comfortable in your presentation and know and and also what what we mentioned with regards to online presentation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Your brand is you and you have built that brand and people follow that brand. And now a days to jump online and do research about a person and their brand is far easier than it was 20 years ago Def- or oh, for your for dad sure. or for Brad or whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's also one of those too, like when, if someone were to see me online and then immediately make that judgment call, like, I don't want to work with him because he has tattoos or because he's a ginger. Like I just, just not my style of person. Like I'm glad that that yeah, happened. Thank goodness then. they made that decision. Yeah, for yeah. The I would both hate for you. that to happen <laughs> yeah. after they first meet me because I'm in long sleeves and wearing you know a full on hat covering my hair. And then when I take off my hat to you know because I'm sweaty, they discover I have red hair and then they no longer want to work with me. <laughs> like I'd much rather save bo- all of our time and let them establish that beforehand. Right. But it all it's like a it's an initial barrier. Like I want people that. I want people to come into my life and work and work with me and be, you know, clients of mine that appreciate everything that I can bring to the table for them. And that is how I think building a sustainable business, whether real estate or whatever it may be, like that's how you build the quiet, the, the most quality level of clientele. But like having people that are so committed to just like you as a person, like the full rounded picture of what you provide as real estate, you know, the way you look, the way you speak, that your family values, like all of that in the one combination i think that's what's so like fun and interesting about real estate because we have that ability to to demonstrate and use that where uh it's just it just makes me happy that that clients actually lean in to the way that i am and i know there are people out there that probably do not agree with my values and do not appreciate maybe the, some of the things i say or the way i look but that is the whole reason why i do all of this and why i am so authentic about who i am because i want them to make that call sooner rather than later yeah. and save their own time by learning that quicker yeah which is phenomenal with regards to that that ability to be able to connect with people online and see them from afar yeah. and watch and 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 sort of get an idea of who you are, what you stand for, um, maybe what your favorite tat is. I don't even know what your favorite tat is, but <laughs> you know, like- I have a Spock tattoo on my shoulder I'm really proud of. Uh, a spot? Spock, like- uh, Oh, Spock. Okay. From Star Trek. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It says live long and prosper. It's one of my favorite. It's, um, it's like a throwback to the Space Ghost too. Yeah. So. Um, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. Um, at any rate, yeah, I think it's important that, uh, or it's great that people can actually vibe with those individuals, and 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 eventually, even if at, what's great about it too is that there's might be people that are initially sort of off put, let's say, by tats, or I, I know we're honed in on tats, yeah. but it could be. Piercings, well, been, it could be. I mean, the tattoos have had such a stigma for such a long time. Yeah, that's that, a, it's like, an easy one. I'm to also target. honored that I can be at, at the level of real estate production that I am at, the level of success that I have had in an industry, and still have all these tattoos. Like to me, it's something I'm really proud of because, like most people in tattoos, like. The, there is that stigma. Like you oh, can't total. be for pro- professional. You can't be in this environment yeah. and have your tattoos. It's like, a, I, you know, that's another thing. It's like a fuel, like burning. Right. And I think there are still, as I was saying earlier, I think there is still that stigma. I think there yeah. are still people that are covering up because they're, they, they want to get to the next level and thinking that the tattoos might be yeah. holding them back potentially, or, you know, hindering them from moving forward. But that's the thing I was trying to say is that it's awesome that now people get an opportunity to at least sort of engage from a distance, you know, and and as time goes on, the value that you provi- you specifically are providing to consumers is 
I mean, it's like who who the who cares? Who the hell cares? Who cares what, what, you, what he what looks you look like? like what he smells like? What he sounds like? I want to like. work with this person because they are smart as shit, and yeah. you know they're good at what they do. Um, I, I yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting. I know we're talking a lot about tattoos, and it has a lot to do with men. I, I mean, you know, and women have tattoos too. But yeah, I'm curious what the stigma would be for for ladies because I don't really know with tattoos. Well, no, just I mean, it's easy for. I'm just saying, I mean, obviously we're talking about tattoos. I'm just I mean, I think it's, it's completely different. That's a like a dangerous space to walk in. I mean, I think like the low hanging fruit on that is like, you know, you have um, women that might go to an appointment showing more skin than others. Right. And so that, like, that's probably from yeah. like, this is a, a really like generic, easy yeah, perspective. Like yeah. I'm sure there are women out there that are like fully aware that they might be you know, they're just comfortable in their body and they've worked really hard to to make it look the way that it does and they're proud of it and they want to show it off, like fully support yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But it's a much different like landscape because like there are there are agents that do that but might not have the knowledge or the experience to back it up and they might be leaning too much into the personal or the the physical appearance yeah, of it true. in an effort to to gain, you know, market share of clientele yeah. versus like those women that are beautiful inside and out and very, very knowledgeable and smart about what they do. Yeah, so I, I feel like that. that's a whole, like that, that would actually yeah. be a really good guess to have someone on to hear their take about yeah, that. Yeah, it would be. It would, like it would yeah. Phenomenal. What women wear to appointments and where their level of comfort is. Or also the, uh, or also what they experience with regards to that. Like, yeah. You know, that would be interesting because, uh, you know, I'm sure this same sort of concepts, like they're not traditionally showing up in sweats where, you know what I mean? Because I know I love to wear my joggers, you know, and, and, and there's comfort, comfortable joggers for the ladies too, you know, like they would want to wear those and stuff, but they, they dress up, you know, for the occasion, in other words, to show the house or whatever. And it would be interesting to get. Yeah. And I, I feel like we probably have it a lot easier too. Like we can be a lot more casual and dressed down where, where women probably can't because of the whole appearance of like if I, mean, I can even imagine like being a, a woman meeting a client for the first time and like just the level of like fear of like is this person like legit is this like a creeper yeah. like I, I don't know it's like that's yeah, a, it's that'd be, be that's a terrifying experience so more power to the women out there that are doing that and also holding themselves at a very high professional you know level and being able to operate in that space like but yeah we should get a guest on the, uh, to yeah. talk about that yeah we will um, yeah, that's a good idea but yeah, I mean, like the level of of what I'm wearing to appointments now, because I know just, you don't carry two different pairs of shoes in the car or three different pairs of shoes. I know lady women brokers that carry multiple pairs oh. of shoes with them because they'll heal up, and then when they go on like the a, showings, a, will put on some flats or something. Yeah, that or not only that, I they have boots that for walking in like horse farms and stuff oh, like no. that. You know, like I'm just saying, you and I, we're like. Oh, I'm wearing these shoes. I don't care. Like it's one pair of shoes. I I do know women brokers. That I, do uh, that. So only... <laughs> it back to your point. It would be amazing to get a perspective like that. You know what I mean? Because they I, probably deal with I a don't. whole litany of things that that we don't. Here we're just talking about you know face value. That's image. a whole other topic. Like what? It'd be funny because like if some a woman was like, I carry extra shoes. I'd be like, I carry extra ammunition. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Okay. On that okay. note. On that note. Um, so yeah, I think dressing for the job is something that you obviously have to be comfortable with. And I mean, both Jesse and I, like we both do pretty high real estate numbers across the board. We represent a, a, a good, like a skew of clientele from price point. And what I've d discovered is even in like the highest tier of and my highest sales price last year was 2.8 million. Those people showed up to almost every appointment in shorts and flip flops, which did not give me the permission to that. But I still wore this same ensemble to that. Yeah. And it was one of those things they never once looked at what I was wearing and said, you can't be our agent because we're looking at multi-million dollar homes and you're wearing a shirt and, t and jeans. Yeah. Like they respected it to the point where it was like they knew who I was and the knowledge I brought to the table. And it was one of those things. It was an, almost an eye-opening event where I'm like, man, because I was always like kind of maybe a little concerned about that. Like once you're entering that luxury market, like is the expectation where I have to wear a suit and kind of fully dress the part where it just absolutely leaned into what I've always done and who I am and what I represent. And, and they loved it. And they've actually now at this point, we've done three real estate transactions together. Yeah. It's so, phenomenal. Yeah. I think last year was like $6 million in real estate just with yeah. them. And these were, yeah. these were clients that I wore the same outfit to. And yeah. Um, and, and don't, and, and, and don't be fooled either. It doesn't mean that you're wearing, you know, the most expensive t-shirt and the most expensive jeans and the most expensive shoes. That doesn't, that's not exactly what, that's not what we're talking about. You no. know, you can wear, 
you know, the most expensive of all that or the least expensive of all that or a nice combination of it. But really what we're boiling down to is uh, it's about the comfort. And that just means temp climate comfort. That means your own personal comfort, your professional, what you're comfortable in wearing and how you're at the end of the day, you're not concerned with what you're wearing. You're concerned with what you're providing yeah. from a value standpoint. Yeah. And yeah. brand. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Definitely one of those topics that's, that's kind of interesting to to discuss because i think there's like a lot of different opinions on it i'm sure people listening to this now are appalled at the fact (laughs) that uh i have the audacity to represent million dollar clients in sneakers and jeans and a shirt and you probably have other client other agents and and people are like that's pretty gangster i've been always wanting to do that now we've gave them their encouragement to to rock that but at the end of the day whatever it is that you feel comfortable wearing and something that is truly you know your identity and something that like is going to make you comfortable in the conditions in which you are working like that's what you should in and out of your skin you know yeah. that's what you should wear man at the end of the yeah. day like i don't know i guess we're not, yes. we're not fashion advisors oh i am you, you just yeah jesse has actually given me some yeah. really good what is what is that like a boss oh those are <laughs> i'm just kidding dude i'm just i got my I don't know if you can see like, <laughs> at any rate um yeah i mean it, it this is sort of a uh you know off kilter just a fun little topic. opinionated yeah. uh, conversation again like we're always encouraging those listening watching like give us your feedback on that if you think we're or clowns out here rocking you know jeans um i encourage you to come down to florida and in, in uh in july and wear your <coughs> dan, shoe, O'Neill. dan o'neill <laughs> and try to make it through two showings and not be in a complete miserable uh mess it's just not that's not a that's not something that I that I'd wanted to to do, and I'm um, uh, f- I fully go back to my decision when I transitioned out of the suits. Like, great great choice, uh, but yeah. I do draw the line at, at a full length pant. I, I will you will not see me in shorts. Uh, yeah. Showing properly. probably a good thing too. I have um, very uh, pasty legs. <laughs> <laughs> at any rate, um, yeah. In addition to that, the, is is that you might find that comfort level after you've done a certain amount of business too. I mean, you and True. whatever team you're on, and and growing within them, and whatever your mentor or coach is saying, hey, do this, do that. I mean, look, you're, you're, you 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 got to sort of make it at some point to be able to feel comfortable in what you're providing, you know, yeah. uh, information wise. So, either way, we just wanted to chat about. Uh, Clothing, fashion, yeah, fashion. High fat. This is a very high fashion yeah. episode. I know. Usually, I try to say what WWJD. Do you know what WWJD means, Shane? What would get it right? Jesse, Jesse do. Jesse do. What would Jesse do? Don't you forget it. At any rate, uh, <laughs> it's actually what would Jesus do? I could um, be anything you want, really. Huh? What would Jesse do? What would Jesse, what would Jesse what, do? What is, yeah. Yeah. If you if you need fashion advice, WWJD. What would yeah, what would, what JD would Jesse do? do? <laughs> anyway, um, we're gonna we're gonna close out on this segment. Get us out of here, please. Yeah, we're, we're I don't done. ever want to do a fashion uh, show. Thank you guys. It, it, and listen, if you do, like Shane said, if you do have um your own opinions about what is a good idea. In fact, if you you know what? Let's just get crazy. If you have uh, suggestions with regards to cool pants to wear, like Lululemons. Absolutely not. <laughs> or, 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 or great style ideas like with, regard, with regards to shoes, shirts, pants, whatever. The skinniest jeans uh, you can find possible. <laughs> just shoot me a DM Absolutely with those. Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> anyway, we thank you guys for listening. Hope you had a little bit of fun on this. We did. Um, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.